Hello everyone, welcome to Off the Cuff where the headlines come to life and we have Pop Peterson in the house uh, who is an artist extraordinaire with an incredible vision. Uh, we are going to talk to him about the four freedoms uh, that uh, Roosevelt created um, during World War II and how he's connected to that whole story. So Pops, welcome to Off the Cuff. Thank it's you a so pleasure much to have me. you. Uh, you actually traveled here from New York. Yeah. Um, I live in upstate New York, way in the wilderness. <laughs> <laughs> in the wilderness. Top of a hill. I don't, somehow New York and wilderness don't yeah, sort of mesh well, together, I'm but really, you would, maybe you can there see is. see another building when you look out. All you can see is mountains. Really? And, uh, that's beautiful. Okay, yeah, that, that's not the stereotype that New York has. Upstate. But, uh, beautiful, beautiful. You also um, own a salon and day spa, um, seven Salon Spa um, that's right. in New York as well. No, that's in Stockbridge. Stockbridge, okay. It's in Stockbridge and it's located right across the street from Norman Rockwell's house. Wow, so it's sort of all connected somehow it's here. It's weirdly connected. All yeah, right, it's all right. Cosmic. Great. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more in a little okay, bit. Good. But um, the Henry Ford Museum has on display the beautiful artwork of Norman Rockwell um, depicting the Four Freedoms. Uh, and your and artwork work too, is yeah. there too, so um, so so obviously um, the talent uh, speaks for itself. Um, given that you're being displayed with Norman Rockwell, uh, so tell us about that. Um, well, the four freedoms first of all. Tell us about the four freedoms um, and how you came to focus on on wanting to sort of recreate that concept within okay. your own artwork. The Four Freedoms was a concept that Franklin Delano Roosevelt had in the middle of World War II. He wanted to galvanize the, the public. He wanted to give them ideals to aspire to and to work for. And um, he announced it in a speech. And unfortunately, it didn't really connect with the public very well. No, it didn't resonate at but all. But he kept on promoting it. There was, I think, a symphony written about the Four Freedoms. There were all kinds of artworks that came about. and and parades, etc. But it wasn't really working. But he put the call out to artists and Norman Rockwell answered the call on his own and he spent months putting together his vision of the Four Freedoms. So, and, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, the Four Freedoms are the freedom of worship, the freedom of speech, the freedom from fear, and the freedom from, from want, right. which is like sort of commerce and, and business and, and Well, and want, want is like, it's in, in his version, he's showing um, a Thanksgiving dinner. So he's showing people who are, whose Prosperous. needs. Prosperous. Right, whose needs are met. They don't have to worry about the scarcity of food that was going on during the wartime. You imagine they're clothed and, and sheltered. Right. Basically, shelter was what he was getting at. And, and what I really, what really resonated with me with this whole story is that um, when, when President Roosevelt was talking about the Four Freedoms, uh, he really emphasized that it's not just nationwide. It no, has he to be the a entire global world. Exactly. And he wanted a global to be the idea. basis of the United Nations, and actually, I think it's written into their charter. Right. But um, it wasn't until Norman Rockwell did his four masterpieces, and they were promoted as posters to sell war bonds, that it really took off. And he raised over a hundred million dollars. Right from people buying these posters. And the posters were very pricey when they came out. They were, I don't know, I, I, in today's dollars, I don't know, but it, I think they were like, you know, I think $100, $500 back then. It was a lot of money you had to pay for these works. Okay, I think some of them, um, some of the war bonds were up to like $24 or $19.90. I thought I heard something like that. Well, let's that. not get into numbers because it doesn't, okay. what, what really matters but, is but that. But when you it, look at the money factor back then to what it would equate to now, I right, mean, it's, it, it's it is huge. exorbitant. It's Absolutely. Huge. So um, he did raise quite a bit of money and he um, focused the attention of the public around these ideals. And they become iconic. And they are his most celebrated works and um, probably the most valuable as well. And they continue to inspire to this day. The most famous, the most popular one is Freedom From Want, 
which is the Thanksgiving Day picture. Right, 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 right. I think on Modern Family, I know it's, it's a long shot here, but Modern Family actually depicted right. it's um, been the live view of that. So it is satirized. definitely, yeah, it's definitely a, one of his most popular works. Um, and you you actually did a depiction on that as well. So, so what you did was you took um, the Four Freedoms and the artistry of Norman Rockwell and sort of made it your own in regards to interpretation. So um, since we've ta we're talking about the freedom from want um, in, that, in that picture, so, um, and, and your, your depiction, um, which we have up, up on the green screen, is pretty similar, but the details are a little bit changed. So tell us about that and tell us what your um, your, your inspiration and okay. what you're meaning right. to okay, display. Okay, let's just step back just a little bit um, and I'll briefly tell you how the whole thing came about. I was doing cartoons for a blog that I was writing and lo and behold one of them looked like a Norman Rockwell picture to me. I didn't know how I'd done it, I hadn't had any intention of doing it, but having done so I thought well wouldn't it be interesting to just redo a lot of his pictures as if they were happening now. So I did one, it worked very well, all on my own. And for the second one, my friends knew I was doing the project. They said, come over to our house, we're having Thanksgiving dinner. Why don't you do your Thanksgiving picture? And I said, oh wow, this is terrific. I don't have to cook a dinner now and have everybody over to my house. So I went to a real Thanksgiving dinner and I was you know, picking who would play what role. And my friend who I wanted to be delivering the um, the turkey, turkey said, no, why don't you do it? You should put your own spin on it. <laughs> you know, it's all happening organically. It, was, it wasn't something that I wrote down and said, I will do this with the four freedoms. It just sort started of happening. Happened upon yeah, you. she said, put your own spin on it, Maurice. Why don't you do it with Mark? So Mark is my husband. I have Mark delivering the, the turkey and I stood back. So it's like, we're hosting the party for some family or other or a group of friends has not said who is who is who and what the relationship is. So is this a real are. Thanksgiving dinner? That's a real Thanksgiving dinner. And, okay. it, and it happened on Thanksgiving. So <laughs> okay, um, very symbolic there. But I did want to put updates to the time. So I have one of the um, young girls is on her phone and then across the um, the table the aunt is scolding her about that and everybody else is just enjoying themselves, but I call it Thanksgiving gay dinner because it's a gay couple hosting the, <laughs> hosting the uh, event. So, so basically your own spin on modern day issues. Uh, yeah, I just, I just wanted to say if, if he were doing it today, today what, it what would, would they like? look like? And that's one of the ways it could be. So having done that, every, they, they got very popular very quickly and um, people wanted me to do all four freedoms, so um, I eventually did finish them all. They got more elaborate. The last one I did was freedom from um, freedom of worship, which I call freedom from faith. By that time, I was becoming um, pretty well known as doing this project, and I was able to get many people to represent many different faiths, and they're all from our neighborhood. We have a Hindu, we have Catholics, Jews, we have. So An atheist. The atheist is the one on the bottom looking the opposite direction. Everyone else is praying, Got looking it. at the light. So um, that was the second version you did from, um, was the that second the second one? No, actually the second one I did was Freedom From Fear. And I did okay, that. So l let's talk about the worship one first because okay. the Freedom From Fear one is, is, is huge for me. Um, okay. And that's the one you know that's, that's really that's displayed in the Henry Ford. In the Henry right Ford. Um, Behind so bulletproof glass. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you know, unfortunately, we live in a world right now where everything is uh, is scrutinized, and um, and that that freedom of expression is is definitely not what it used to be. So, so I really want to talk about that. But um, the freedom to worship, uh, it 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 sort of has a different connotation where you have, you know, the is, it's the priest right in the middle, and then everybody That's a, sort of um, in, in uh, around a preacher. It's a a preacher. Baptist preacher. Okay. Uh, interesting the way this came about. I was originally going to have it more um, similar to Rockwell's original, where it's just profiles, everybody looking in the same direction. But I wanted to show more diversity. I wanted to have some Muslims. I wanted to have Jews. I wanted to have black people and white people. I wanted some Latinos. I wanted all these people. And when I lined them up all looking the same way, it wasn't working. 
I mean, it was just, it just didn't work. So I had to come up with a whole new composition. And um, the man in the center here, the preacher, is somebody who was not in the original shoot. And he called me up, he said, Maurice, you always had my wife do these shoes for you. How <laughs> come you ever me? want me? I said, well, you want to know what? You're going to be the star of the next production. So he came and we shot him individually. So um, that is Warren Dews and his wife, Roberta, is also there. She's the Baptist girl in the, in the hat okay. um, on the bottom, okay. looking up. So um, I put that together with a whole different composition and just made it more, more my own idea. But it's the same thing if we, we all have the right to worship or not worship as we wish. And I, I like that part, um, or not worship, because I think you're being very, very inclusive um, in regards to the representation of that photo. Um, so what, what, kind of, what kind of feedback did you get from this particular depiction of freedom of worship and the depiction from Rob, Well, I'll be Rockwell's totally honest freedom with you. Worship? People really like it. You know, mm -hmm. the thing is, um, I, didn't, uh, I didn't have an exhibit coming up when right. I did that. So, um, you know, people definitely like it on Facebook. It wasn't really um, in, an, in an exhibition. But the weird thing that happened was I did put it on my Facebook page, and many people did like it. But there were people from the congregation. Oh, because I say one faith equals all faiths. Mm -hmm. All faiths equal one faith. All mm -hmm. faiths equal one faith, which is my belief. All religions are equal, do what you want. We're all close to God. God made us all. And I think you and I are on the same platform on that. Um, but people in the congregation Did objected not. to it. <laughs> said, of course. It's only the Baptists and the wrong ones who know God. And I just said, oh my God. Already a controversy. For nothing, for what I thought is the most basic principle that you could have in this country. You Absolutely. know, that everybody. But is it's, it's good to be able to create something that makes people talk and think yeah, and converse it's, it's, and communicate about those issues. I mean, they're well, very important. Well, that's my uh, ultimate goal is to bring issues to the forefront. And I think you've definitely um, attained that. Um, the freedom of speech, um, that depiction uh, is pretty much almost the same, except you have a woman more so depicting right, I have that a woman style. of color. Uh -huh. And not only that, she's not just speaking. She's right. going, what in the world? <laughs> Is going on, and that's based on. Um, so what the hell, basically? It's is called your, what is, the hell. Is your title? It's called what I the like hell. it. And what it, in a broad sense, represents is what is going on with the government. What in the world? People are actually not. They're not doing their jobs. They're not being honest. Everything seems to be crooked and broken. That is what this, in essence, is is saying to to America right now. Um, but in reality, I actually went to get a permit. I had to go before the uh, town council to get a permit to shoot in the town hall because I was going to do the marriage license. And the bureaucracy and the, the ridiculousness of what I saw going on with people trying to get you know permits to put like an electrical box for the library to have an elevator. <laughs> and there was like some, a word missing from a page or tape, something. Basically. They had, oh, it was mm -hmm. just crazy. And they put me through the ringer too. It's like I had, there were 75 people there that day and they were all applauding for me. And one person is going, I don't know. How much money is it going to make? Are we going to get some of it? <laughs> you know, stuff like that. So um, Do you think eventually that's the I mindset it. these days, though. Do you think that's the mindset? Well, you know what? This not, is let's, pre Trump. Let's make, keep it simple. But as they say, it keep it pre Trump. Simple. And uh, up until that time, I, I had nothing but 100% support. And so he really, this, per, this particular um, initiative person, oh. who uh, one of three votes, it was like a shock. I couldn't believe it. Somebody didn't think this was the greatest thing. That here I am, I'm redoing Norman Rockwell. All his fans are getting old and, and, and leaving us. Bring it down to the new generation. It's good for our town, Stockbridge, where Norman Rockwell lived, where the Norman Rockwell Museum is. This is what I want to do, just stimulate interest and bring people into the town who may never have seen, heard of him before. And this one guy Push said, back. it was, hmm, I don't know. But he didn't have the guts to vote no, he abstained. Is there any significance that she's uh, African American and everybody around her are Caucasian? Uh, well, she's, you know, I myself often find myself, I'm the only African 
American person around. So it's a realistic depiction of what life is like in Stockbridge these days. <laughs> Very few of us are, are non-white, but we're there. Absolutely, you know, and everybody's you know. listening attentively. People so. are listening, some people agree, and some people are going, what, what the heck? Yeah, <laughs> yeah who, who let her talk? So, um, the particular artwork um, that is very, very, very noticeable and front and center at the Henry Ford Museum is the Freedom of Fear uh, depiction from Norman Wackel's Freedom of Fear. And of course, um, totally, totally different concept, different emotion, um, and different vision. So tell us about that. Um, and then the, the newspaper, of course, says, I cannot breathe. I so, can't breathe. I yeah. can't breathe. So tell us how that came about. That that yeah, and 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 how you you balance that vision of a of a perfect family, living prosperity, um, you know, feeling safe, um, you know, Caucasian, you know, two kids, basically your normal right. well, vision, and then and what then Rockwell have this. showed was the American ideal at work. The war is raging in Europe, but in America, everyone is safe. Good. There's no blitzkrieg over here, and we're flying. But I just wanted to show that in another neighborhood and in another time, you can have a job. Obviously, these people have a nice home. They're well-dressed. They're a loving family, but they still don't feel safe because um, right outside the window, something's going on. There's a cop car going down the street, and, and the father is wondering if he's going to be able to leave leave his apartment and or, come back or, safe. or who what which of his neighbors might be in trouble and um, it was a very haunting thing that happened and um, was there an inspiration to this particular I just wanted to depiction? do it I just wanted to show another side of the of the railroad tracks that's all I wanted to do I wanted to put my own voice in it um, it was the first time I was ever in a studio and I shot it on my iPhone and uh, I had no I know I just thought it was a good idea that should be done. I had no idea that this would be the one that everybody, you know, just thinks is, you know, my best and the one that needs all the glory. Well, but I, I think with the movement of Black Lives Matter and, you know, everything that we've seen within our country, um, that maybe this touched a nerve more so than, than well, the others? Well, true. Um, in all truth, there are a lot of them that have not been seen. Yeah, and not been publicized, so who knows what may eventually happen with other works that I've done. But this one definitely did hit a raw nerve. Um, it was selected by CBS to go on the Sunday Morning Show, which, which I've posted on my website. If you want to see it, it's a wonderful piece about the whole creation of the Four Freedoms and how um, my art connected to it. It's on my website, popspeterson.com. Only six minutes, really worth seeing. Um, but having seen that, myself because they this is I can't breathe this what Eric Gardner said when he was basically murdered by the New York cops for for no reason selling loose cigarettes which he I don't know I'm not going to get into the details of it but it was a, not a capital crime whatsoever and he was killed dead right on the street and it wasn't until I actually saw this on the news cutting from my picture to the picture of Eric in the street his last breath, and realizing that his words were what gave so much power, because these are the words of a dying man. And uh, it was it really shocked me what I had done when I saw it on TV. You know, it is your, your work is extremely emotional because it does translate what we're dealing with as a nation and as a country, and really the license to hate right now and, Ugh, and, 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 and giving and empowering people to act on those negative senses and, and those stereotypes and the, the sense of, of, of racism that we have. Um, and that I, think, that I think is the saddest moment that I've seen in our country. Um, in well, it's the worst thing that's happened in my <laughs> lifetime since the assassinations in the 60s. Absolutely. Um, but so, I got to draw hope from that because after Martin Luther King was killed so many wonderful things did happen for black people and against racism due to his death so I'm just looking for the turnaround I'm hoping there will be a big and we blue have a wave. solid platform to work 
from, hopefully coming Well, we back do, to but it's been so undermined and corrupted by people, you know, changing rules and, and breaking rules in the highest offices of the country. And um, that's appalling, and that's very frightening right now. So I'm just hoping that, that the Founding Fathers were wise enough in their Constitution and that we haven't gotten so far corrupted that it'll fall apart. That's a big fear right now. Good always has to trump oh. evil. <laughs> right? Good it has to. Evil. You use that word. <laughs> it has yes. to. It, well, it has to, and I believe that truth win wins, but sometimes you pay in a very high, high price. price. But it's worth that price to get to where we need to go. Um, so did I understand that I Can't Breathe was something prior to the Eric Gardner thing? In the oh no, Eric Gardner it, had okay. um, just died actually. Okay, so it's maybe so a month or two a, prior. There is a connection there. And we definitely, you know, said that's what should be on the newspaper when we were in the studio. Pops, you've actually done some of your own work, uh, original right. paintings. Well, I don't want to just be things. known as somebody who couldn't, didn't, who never had his own original idea. Well, hey, you know. this was this was ingenious to do. Well, I, thank you, I know, but I don't just want to be known you know, as a copycat. So I do have my own things to say, and I'm I'm very happy to say that people are responding very well to my own creations as um, as as well as the Rockwells. And, and the first one, as I did, they should, as they should. Um, thank you. The first one you've done is this is, is called it? Freedom from Shame. Okay, I became the um, artist in residence for the Massachusetts Commission Against Discrimination a great honor that I've held for now, it's going on five years. And um, they wanted me to do my own freedom, and they had this idea of freedom from shame, and I had to come up with some way to make that work. And my inspiration came when I went to dinner, and there was a young man there named Dylan Bader, very handsome, young, muscular guy. He was wearing a tank top, and just very unassuming, and you know, just nice guy. And I didn't even notice right away that his right arm ended at the elbow. And um, then he was talking about how he was playing hockey on a team. And I just, I was floored. I said, this, this guy is really an everyday hero. And he deserves to be, to recognize for this. And, you know, I know what it's like to be different. I know what it's like to have something wrong with you and to feel that people don't, are looking at you weird, or they don't really want to touch you. And you mean others think you, there's something wrong with you. Yes, well, yes. And um, I'll tell you, I have, uh, I was in an accident myself when I was a child, and I have scars, massive scars on my legs that nobody sees because I'm always wearing pants. But at the beach or whatever, you know, I know the way they look at me and they, they grimace or they don't, you know, it's just something that I, I've had to deal with since I was 10 years old. But it's not an everyday thing because I wear pants. But Dylan cannot hide the fact that he doesn't have a right hand. And um, so I connected very deeply for that. And I came up with an idea I wanted to show him as the hero that he is. And his everyday life. Almost looks like a gladiator in this picture. I wanted him to be a gladiator. I wanted him to be the most courageous person in the world and the most heroic and the most successful. So that's why I came up with this image that he was in the locker room after just having won the hockey game for the team. So they're pouring champagne on his head. So um, I actually sent that into the Massachusetts Office on Discriminate on uh, Disability, and they loved it so much that they sponsored a statewide art competition based on this picture. And for a year, artists all over the state were um, doing their thing and, and submitting, and I was a, a juror on the, uh, on the show. We didn't know where it was gonna be. They'd never done a show like this before. We thought, well, some office building or a college, we'll find some place for it. And to my surprise, it was shown in the State House of Massachusetts in Boston. Um, right down from the governor's office, and um, I got a, a citation from um, Governor Baker. That's lovely. That is lovely. And you know, the disabilities community is is such a vibrant community as well. And you know, I see that a lot of that community uses their 
disability, and I hate to use that word, but as, as a challenge to do better and move forward and, 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 and as, a, as a form of strength. So uh, this, this definitely touched um, my heart. I, I do a conference called Images and Perceptions mm -hmm. Diversity Conference, and we engaged, um, you know, the Arab American, African American, Hispanic American, but also the disabilities communities. And so we have individuals that come in and talk about the challenges and talk about how they've triumphed over, the, over they those challenges. Have. And, and they become know, an inspiration for others. Being black and through the 60s, that was the civil rights movement. And it never hit me that there was a disability civil, civil rights movement right. coming right behind it. And um, I was very grateful to be in, invited into the community as, um, as a part of my being the, um, with the Massachusetts Commission Against Discrimination. And uh, so that was a great honor to be in the hall and to have so many people who don't get a chance to feel proud and step in front of people and be seen in a beautiful light. In a positive light. This, this, this time together went by really quickly. We only have like three minutes oh left. Oh my goodness, okay. But I wanted to talk, um, first of all, about how, you know, the connection between you and Norman Rockwell real quick. Oh, but I wow. want to talk about this really quick, maybe, maybe about 50 seconds. Um, the Me Too movement and the picture that you depicted, I'm with her. Yeah. Um, so tell us about that. Uh, you know, it's based in well, Washington, D.C., and uh, I thought that was a very interesting platform background. Yeah, you know, this is just a little bit, as I recall, a little bit before Me Too, but it was um, in response to the Women's March, which happened in, most people don't know it, more than 600 cities around the world oh, absolutely. had a march huge. on that day. Sure. And I, needed, I just wanted to commemorate that. And the community was so responsive. I had 45 people come to pose for this picture all on the same day. 45 people showed up for free to model to, to, because they wanted to make a statement with me. So I consider it one of my best achievements. That's also not been well publicized yet. Well, the artwork that you are focusing on really tells a story and, and, and it makes you think, it makes you think about what's happening right now and what we need to do as citizens and, and as individuals and as human beings to make things better for ourselves. But the very beginning, you told me something before we got on camera, so I really want to talk about that really quick. So well, you I'll live across the, the street here. from? I just happened <laughs> to buy a building and my business, Seven Salon Spa, is located right across the street from the house where Norman Rockwell lived his, fat, his last 25 years and died. And when he died, they brought his body into our building because it was a funeral parlor, and Norman Rockwell was embalmed in our staff room. 35 years, Wow. many, many years later, he started haunting me, I believe. We always <laughs> thought his ghost was around, but all of a sudden I did a picture that looked like Norman Rockwell and I had no intention of doing it. And then I had the idea and one by one, I mean within a year I was being presented in the main lot, a main um, hall of the Norman Rockwell Museum and I've been working with them ever since. So I just think that it's Wait a something minute. meant to go be. Back, go back, okay, go, go back. back. Ghost? Haunting. So, how do you? I mean, do you th do you feel like that inspiration was there, and that's what sort of led you, or, or how does? How, what do you? What are you thinking? I, love I believe this stuff. that <laughs> it was my destiny to do this. This is crazy, but I was born about three quarters of a mile from the same spot where Norman Rockwell was born, and then when he was a uh, teenager, he lived on St. Nicholas Avenue, a little bit farther north of town, and I went to high school on St. Nicholas at the High School of Music and Art learning to paint. And then he bought number eight South Street and I bought number seven South Street. So we just got closer and closer and closer together. Um, it just seems like it was a path I was intended to be on. Absolutely. Little, and little did I know. I, had, I knew that Norman Rockwell was from Stockbridge but I had no idea it was right across the street. I look out my office window and that's his house. Wow, that is, that's amazing. <laughs> it's really and, weird, and look right? what you've done um, in regards to keeping his, you know, uh, artwork alive. Well, and we could then do another hour or half hour or I'm two sure hours talking about this. And I'm uh, sure we definitely. Sorry could. that this the time is, is up. This is very inspirational, and I think people that have followed this and 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 look at that artwork and then look at your artwork can see the connection, can see the changes, and can see what they have to do to make our world a little bit well, better. Well, that, that's my and that's my what home. you're doing. So yeah. I want to thank you so much, Pops Peterson, for being here. Um, and you can see them all on popspeterson.com. There you go, absolutely. You. Um, our four freedoms, it's important. We as 
as a community, as a state, as a nation, as human beings, as a world, need to make sure that those freedoms are protected and that we protect the freedoms of others as well. If we don't stand up for others, no one's going to stand up for us. Thank you so much for joining us on Off the Cuff. And keep in mind, we're all in this together. Have a wonderful day.